All right, we gotta talk about this physical versus digital video games debate. And this goes beyond video games. It goes into the entire sphere of, you know, collecting in general, whether you're collect collecting music or movies or video games or anything that is exists on a physical media, even books versus eBooks. Like this is a huge, huge debate and both sides have merit. That's the key. Both sides have merit, and it's getting really, really annoying as I come across these gatekeeping, uh, you know, bigoted assholes who, you know, insist that anyone who purchases a digital product is n not only stupid, not only an idiot, because we're too stupid to realize that a digital product has no value and, you know, buying a physical product. Okay, I just bought Dokapon Kingdom here, uh, a pretty, you know, obscure game for the Nintendo Switch that was also an obscure game on the Nintendo Wii. Does this have value? This probably will have value, but you know what? When this this came out, the Wii version, which was the only way to play this previously, uh, it dropped in value by like half. So, you know, this is not always a guaranteed thing that you're going to buy a video game and it's going to increase in value and be worth more and more and more. Another example of that, again with the Wii, was Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, when Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition came out on the Nintendo Switch and 2020 was that the value of the original Wii version absolutely tanked here's another game that I bought I could have bought this digitally or physically Super Smash Brothers there's 25 million copies of this game out there uh, right right now it's still a fairly expensive game you're going to pay anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars less than brand new if you buy it used at the best so you know was it a good idea to buy it physically physical well you know probably but it could have gone either way honestly because there's 25 million copies of this game out there so presumably at least half of those are physical so you know there's at least 10 to 15 million physical copies of this game out there in the wild do you think this is ever going to be a game that's going to be worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars i don't know but I don't think I purchase video games based on what I think they're going to be worth in the future. Do I, you know, maybe a little bit, like, you know, if I see something super cheap out there in the wild, for example, <clears throat> this beautiful box set of Princess Mononoke, the Studio Ghibli movie, uh, this was in w Walmarts for a while, and this is a beautiful box set with an art book and a Blu-ray and stuff like that, and this was like $25 or something, and my son, uh, Kaz, actually bought this for me for my birthday, I believe it was, and, uh, you know, this is probably going to retain its value because it's a special edition and it was something that was not out there in you know wide release it was a fairly small release i've never seen this again so this may have some value at some point could i just download princess mononoke uh you know from a pirate torrent website absolutely could i purchase this game or or this movie or rent it uh on YouTube movies or something for six dollars probably uh, but that's not the point owning a physical item is great if that is what you like to do if that is how you like to consume and if you are interested in all these other uh, you know ethereal concepts like preservation and that sort of thing uh, you know I've been collecting a lot for the PS3 lately and I picked up some games that I think uh, are probably going to be a little bit rare in the future. Splatterhouse, for example, on the PS3. I actually had to pay a fair amount of money for this because it's already kind of rare and desirable. So, you know, am I doing a good thing by preserving this for the future, or at least preserving my access to it indefinitely? Well, you know, I guess if that's your thing, absolutely. Picked up the Mass Effect Trilogy. I think this is a really nice looking box set. Uh, you know, gives you all three games in a nice looking package. I, you know, I like stuff like this. And you know what? You see the Mass Effect games all over the place on, uh, you know, the PS3 for uh, five bucks, six, seven bucks a piece. 
and I paid like $20 for this, so I don't feel like in any way I overpaid, but, uh, you know, if you're going to pick up some physical items and you want to build a physical collection, by all means do that. The thing here is, the argument here that only physical collectors are the legit gamers, that only physical collectors know what's up. And if you're buying a digital product, or if you're, you know, doing something like emulation and piracy, uh, that you're <clears throat> somehow less legit as a gamer, less legit as a collector, that having a collection of digital properties is not a collection at all. And I absolutely object to that. People have been collecting video games on Steam for a decade or more since Steam came around. And I, I absolutely trust Steam that my digital purchases are going to stay there literally forever. Uh, are there some examples of digital games being delisted? Absolutely. Are there some problems? in the digital rollout as far as you know consoles being shut down and people no longer having access to some of their digital purchases in some cases yes that has happened but in a lot of cases for years after a console uh you know has been shut down effect effectively you can still re-download your digital purchases even on something like the wii i believe you can still re-download your digital purchases on the wii how long ago did the wii shut down so sure you can't re like buy more games on the wii you can still ensure that your purchases are safe and sound. Let's look at the Nintendo Switch. All the games that you have on your Nintendo Switch right now, if you, you have downloaded uh, digital games, they're going to be there for the next several years until the Nintendo Switch store shuts down, which is going to be probably 10 years from now, and probably beyond that, that you will still be able to re-download your purchases, and then you know what? You have those downloaded on your Switch. You get to keep those for as long as your Switch is a viable device, as long as, as it is working. So you're looking at having these digital titles for, what, 20 years at least? Uh, you know, by the time you add everything all up. So I don't think this is as big of a problem as people think it is, because once you get to the point where you're 15 or 20 years after, uh, you know, uh, you made these purchases, are you going to care anymore? Like, if you've picked up all these digital games for 5 bucks here and 10 bucks there, drastically cheaper than the physical versions. You know, I picked up Tales of Zillia uh, Limited Edition here, Tales of Zillia is not available anywhere digitally. Uh, I don't think maybe you can get it on the PS3 digitally. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, this hasn't been re-released uh, like some other games on the Switch or the PS5 or whatever. So you can't get this game unless you buy it on the PS3. The great thing about digital releases is it's a lot easier for publishers and developers to get their product out there and get it out there for a good price. I see time after time after time. I wish I could show show you right now my Switch, uh, you know, page with all my installed games because it's absolutely crazy how many digital games I actually have that I have picked up for incredible prices. You know, if I'm going to pay full price 90 something dollars in, in Canada uh, for a brand new game if I'm going to pay full price I'm probably going to buy physical uh, you know th that just seems to make more sense because yes I can sell it down the road if I want to I have that value there in that physical item but that does not make me stupid for picking up an indie game for five bucks instead of spending two hundred dollars trying to f find the limited run, uh, you know, limited release on eBay after the fact or something, you know, a lot of these physical games now are getting harder and harder and harder to acquire, and that's what they want, want. this is what the developers and publishers want, they want these games to get harder to acquire, to push people, push them towards digital, and I understand that the digital future is not exactly what we want it to be right now, that there are drawbacks to the digital future. Uh, 
but I have faith that as this evolves over the next generation, over the next decade, the digital future is going to look a lot different than it does right now because console manufacturers don't treat their di digital games like a platform like Steam does. Steam, you buy a game in, you know, 2014 and you still have it, you know, through Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11, you still have that game and it's still playable and you're going to own that game forever. And I think uh, console manufacturers will get to that point eventually with your digital purchases. But this argument that somehow someone who purchases a digital game is stupid, ignorant, uh, uh, you know, betraying the gaming community by... Uh, you know, playing into the games that, uh, you know, these developers are making, uh, you know, that is categorically false and disgusting. That is gatekeeping at the worst levels, and I will not stand for it. After, you know, arguing with this guy, the game collector, uh, you know, for a couple of hours, I just blocked him and moved on because he was too hard-headed to see that different things work for different people and that while you may prefer a physical title and while you may see the logic and sense in only having physical titles for me i look at the gaming industry and i see that since the ps3 since this era we have been getting digital content whether it's dlc or updates or whatever and these physical games are no longer complete so if you want to be a physical physical collector of Super Nintendo or PS1 or PS2 okay great because you're getting the complete package and even to some degree on PS3 and 360 most of the li library of physical games in the seventh generation were complete on disc for the most part most a lot of games did have small patches, small stability updates and things like that. Uh, but a lot of games had DLC in that generation. So theoretically, your game is not complete if it does not have the DLC on the disc. And some games did have a definitive version released a year or two later that also included the DLC, but that's not on every game and as you move forward into the PS4 and PS5 and the Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles you'll see time and time and time again that games are installed uh, you know only partially on the disc and the disc is now more or less a key to unlock a download uh, you'll bring a disc home uh, you know, famously, just recently, the last Call of Duty game, I believe it was, only had like 75 megabytes of a 120 gigabyte game on the disc, and you had to download the rest, and that was their physical copy, which was basically just a, a license key for the download of the game. So at that point, do physical games even make any sense anymore? Like, how am I an idiot for looking at this logically and saying... Uh, there's not much difference here. If I'm buying a physical item that actually does nothing but unlock a digital code and I still have to download 120 gigs to the hard drive of my system and the minute I download or delete that download, the game is gone, right? So the same problem exists when the Call of Duty servers go down or when the Xbox One servers go down. I'm not going to be able to re-download that physical game and I will never be able to play that physical game. So, you know, how am I an idiot here for thinking that digital has its place? Do I think that digital digital is better? Not currently. Do I think it's okay to like digital? Absolutely. Do I think that if, uh, in, you know, a digital thing is more convenient, uh, you know, for something like a portable console, for example, like the Switch or the Steam Deck, uh, you know, to have a bunch of games installed and ready to go, uh, you know, and you don't have to carry around, a, you know, a game case full of game switch cartridges if you've got digital uh, purchases that you can take with you on the go. That is honestly ideal f 
for a portable console. So I don't know guys, what do you think about this? I think it is absolutely just ignorant to try and imply that someone who likes digital games is somehow less of a gamer, that he is somehow betraying the gaming community at large or something by feeding into this nonsense. I think digital games can be good. Just look at Steam as the reference point. Steam has been trucking along for 10, 15 years, and they show no signs of stopping. Do you think Steam is going to go out of business? Do you think Steam is going to shut down their servers? I don't think so, at least not in not in any reasonable amount of time. You never know what's going to happen in the marketplace 10, 15, 20 years from now. But I think it's safe to say that Steam's going to be around for a very long time. And I 100% trust that if Steam is around, my games will be there too. And you know what? Those games are locally installed on my computer. And the minute Steam does go down, the modding and hacking community is going to find a way for me to unlock those games and play them natively on my computer without Steam. So I do not care. I do not think that I'm going to get screwed over by digital purchases. Uh, you know, the same goes for consoles. You know, all these digital purchases and stuff, take a look at the 3DS. Now, I had some digital purchases on the 3DS, but after the store shut down, I decided to hack my 3DS. I have two hacked 3DSs and a hacked Wii U, and I have all kinds of games installed on those now that I never had before, because once the store shut down, I have no moral qualms about, you know, downloading games, pirating games, whatever you want to call it. And the same goes for the Switch. By the time these games are no longer playable on my Switch, I will have found a way to hack my Switch and I won't care anymore. Uh, you know, ownership, the idea that you have to own this physical item that you can put on a shelf and, and show people that you know, this is yours, okay, that's great for some people, but that's kind of a boomer attitude, folks. Like, a lot of people just like to have access to the things that they like. They don't necessarily need to feel like... Uh, you know, they have something to brag about. A lot of people don't feel the need to brag about their video game collection. They just want to play them. They just want to have access to the games. And whether that's physical or digital or pirated or, you know, like RGT playing on a mini, mini PC after he sold his collection, like, it doesn't matter how you play the games. As long as you have access to the games and you can play them when you want, that's all that matters. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Let me know down in the comments if you think I'm the crazy person. I, I don't know. I just do not understand this logic. I love physical folks. Look behind me here. I have VHS. I have toys. I have collectibles. I have DVDs, games, books. Like I love physical media. I love it. And I will never stop collecting it. But that doesn't mean that I am somehow evil for having a few digital purchases. Anyways, stay classy out there, guys.